please rise to your feet and do God the honor. The God that is the mate of nobody. Just lift up your hands and begin to say something great to God. Lift up your voice and begin to worship him. Praise him. Magnify him. Glorify him. Let our voices be louder. Lift a song of worship and a song of praise and just begin to honor God with your voice. Today is the day of miracles. The day of signs and wonders. Somebody begin to thank God in anticipation of what is going to happen here today. Can we make our voices louder? We are celebrating Jesus today. His finished works. We are celebrating, we are remembering him for all the marvelous things that he has done. Somebody lift your voice in Hausa, in Igbo, in Yoruba, in Icho, in Igala. Lift your voice and worship the King of Kings. Let's make our voices louder. Louder, 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 louder. Oh, Jesus. Let it be louder. Somebody magnify the Lord in this place. Magnify the Lord. Think about his goodness. Think about his mercy. For your wife, for your children, for your husband, for all that he has brought you through. That is enough reason for you to thank him. I see some of us are getting there. I'm looking for true worshippers. Where are my worshippers? Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Casting crowns. Lifting hands. Bowing hearts. Is all we've come to do. Can we take it one more time? Say, casting crowns. All my worries, Lord. Lifting hands.
magnify you. We glorify you. Eternal rock of ages. Blessed be your holy name forever. We celebrate you today, Lord. We remember your faithfulness, your kindness. Even in this hour, you are still standing for us. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name. Can somebody bless the name of the Lord? Shuku. this place. easy I'm going to be sharing with us <laughs> I'm excited as well so I can feel you how many people are excited for today <laughs> hallelujah by the help of the Holy Spirit I'll be sharing a word with us that I have titled living in wisdom Living in wisdom. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew 10. And we'll read 16. Living in wisdom. Matthew 10, 16. I am sending you out like a sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. What does it mean to be shrewd? It means to be intelligent. It means to be wise. It means you are prudent. You are mindful of your interests. And in this day and age, I think we need to even be more careful now than ever because of everything that is happening in the world and in the community. Early this year, Papa gave us a lot of prophecies regarding everything he foresaw in the spirit and he asked us to pray before we knew there was anything like COVID-19 Papa had told us to pray and if you remember clearly Papa spoke to us about a lot of hardship that will come into the world into Nigeria but it will not affect us how many people remember so for those of us that was prudent and was wise we made sure we cut down on spending. We made sure we saved more. We made sure we had food in the house. And so many other things that we wouldn't have known to do had it not been for God. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said, I'm going to send you out into the world. I want you to be very wise. Indirectly, that is what he was telling them. He said, I want you to be able to live amongst evil and still be very wise and still be successful and still thrive in the midst of evil. 
The dove is one of the, I think, purest bird you can find. It is one of the most calmest bird. It is very gentle. You know, it doesn't attack. It is very calm. So you can see the two figures of speech that Jesus was giving to us to become. It meant that we had to be smart when we needed to be smart. And it meant that we had to be calm when we needed to be calm. There are a lot of things you can learn from being wise. But out of the very many, I'm going to be taking three. And we'll start with the first one. When God shows you certain things, the way you react will determine if you keep showing you things. A wise man knows when to speak. A wise woman knows when to speak. A wise man knows and is sensitive to the seasons and to the time. I'll read 1 Samuel 26, 12 very quickly. The Bible says, So David took the spear and the jug of water by Saul's head, and him and his Abish Abinashah, they got away. And so no man saw or knew it or awoke when David was in the camp, for they were all asleep. Because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen on him. Anybody who was in David's position and heard David's story, who had known how many times Saul tried to kill him, and then lying before you asleep was an enemy who had tried to kill you severally. Because of him, you lost your inheritance. He had been ordained to be king. So David knew his path was glorious. But because of this same person, David was running like a thief, even though he didn't do anything wrong. And here we see David come into the camp where Abner was supposed to be protecting Saul. He sees Saul and his own cousin who had come with him. He said, this is the opportunity. Let's kill this man really quick. Two, two daggers and before you know it, I'll do it quick, I'll do it painless and we'll be out of here. And all your worries will come to an end. If you read through scripture, David was not a perfect man, but he was a very wise man. And because of wisdom, he was able to get everything that God had ordained for him to get. And so David looked at his cousin and said, no, it is not right that I kill God's anointed. Let us just take the jug by his head. Let's take a piece of his fabric as evidence. And David took that and then they left the camp. David went upon the hill. He said, Abner, why is it that you have not protected the king well? And then he called on to Saul indirectly. He, in fact, the summary was that Saul, look at everything I have. I came so close to you. If I wanted to kill you, I would have killed you. But I spared your life. Please let me go. And immediately Saul said, oh, my son. He called him son. My son, I forgive you. Everything is okay. Don't worry, I'll no longer go after you. You are blessed. Thank you for sparing my life. And at the end of the day, a man would have quickly run back to Saul and would have submitted. Did David do that? David didn't do that. Because David knew that there was a spirit in that man that still had not let him go. David stood on the hill. He said, David says to Saul, send your man to come and collect your things. Somebody say wisdom is profitable to direct. David said to Saul, send somebody to come and get your things from me. And so Saul sent somebody to go and get his things. All of this drama happened in the whole of chapter 26. And when we get to 27, the verse, the number one verse said, Saul would definitely kill me. Who would think David would make this kind of statement? After what had just happened, he had just spared Saul's life. Saul had called him son. Saul had said, forgive me. I will not go after you. I realize my wrong now. But David at no time went to Saul. Until God would tell David to do a thing, he would not do it. How many of us think we are so educated? How many of us think we are so smart? And how many of us understand that in this world where we are living in, there are wolves that are ready to do three things that the enemy has sent them to do to you. To kill, to steal, and to destroy you. Hallelujah. Because there are so many times you see people have come to church for their deliverance, for prayers. God has already prepared a table for them in the presence of their enemies. But out of foolishness, that's what the Bible calls it, they go right into the camp of the enemy because they feel they have been fortified. 
David was one of the strongest men that ever lived. He had the power to kill Saul. He had the power to take over the kingdom even when God had not already told him it was time to do so. He was very sensitive to time. A lot of us are not sensitive to time and we make mistakes that we shouldn't make. Wisdom requires you to be prudent, to be intelligent, not to be foolish and stupid. Some of us, because of Christianity, in quotes, you make silly mistakes. No matter how intelligent you are, when the voice, the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something, do what he is telling you to do because you must not understand God completely. You can't understand him. You can't phantom his wisdom. So when he's speaking to you, no matter how holy you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter what you think you know, when he speaks, he has spoken. Praise the Lord. There's something that happens when you partake of the communion. Before Jesus left, after he had come back, he sat with his disciples. The Bible said he broke bread and he gave to them. And as soon as he gave it to them, their eyes was open. Which means there were many things that they were not seeing and they didn't understand that they began to see when Jesus broke bread. If you are here today, and you are the one that has been digging your own grave. By the reason of this communion, let me tell you, your spirit man will become so alert, will become so sensitive, that where you shouldn't go, you will not go there. Where you shouldn't travel, you will not travel there. What you shouldn't eat, you will not eat. Where you shouldn't be friends with, you will not be friends. Let me tell you, half of the people that are in graveyard were killed by people that was close to them. Do you understand that a stranger cannot hate you, mommy? How many people understand it? That a stranger who doesn't know you cannot hate you. How many people understand that? That a stranger who doesn't know you cannot harm you. 90% of the hurt and harm that you go through will come from family members, will come from friends. So we must be sensitive. Jesus gave us the greatest example. He said, I'm sending you out into the world. Go and preach my word. Baptize the people. Bring them into the kingdom. But when you go to a place where you should not enter, don't enter yet. What am I talking about? The other lady that testified here where God had healed her. She went, I was praying for a madman. Was it not a noble cause? It was a noble cause to pray for a madman, isn't it? But was it the right time? So if you're here, may God grant you understanding. Secondly, wisdom requires that not every question thrown at you deserves an answer. <laughs> How is that your son doing? They have not even finished doing. Say, ah, my son is in America now. He's about to study engineering. But in the next two years, he has even introduced his wife to me. <laughs> We're about to go to America to go and do the introduction. Uh, do you know that ah, we even started shopping for the dresses? I'm going to travel. See, this will not be prayer. It is you knowing when to speak. That in itself is dangerous. When you don't know when to speak, you go to an office, you see somebody seated who has also come for the same job. Maybe that you have come for, but you don't know. Ah, my brother, welcome, Lord bless you. We sit down, sit down. Oh, I've come for this contract. Ah, you know that Ted Milan Bridge? It's me that they want to give her. I know the director. They're about to give me. You don't know who you are talking to. Let's quickly read this. I'll be fast, so just bear with me, but you can write it down. Luke 21 to 5. He was teaching and preaching the good news. The religious leaders and the teachers of the law and the elders came, and they said to him, tell us, by what right and power are you using to do these things? They were speaking to Jesus. Who gave you the right and the power? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question also. You answer me. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? They said to themselves, if we say from heaven, he will say, then why did you not believe me? But if we say from men, then all the people will throw stones at us because they believed John was the one who spoke for God. They said that they did not know where John's baptism came from. Jesus said to them, and I will not tell you where I get the right and the power to do what I am doing. 
Jesus was the greatest mathematician, the greatest physician, the greatest everything you can think of. He had answers at every time. But when it was time for him not to explain, he didn't bother explaining. Jesus was so gentle that even the flax from a burning, from a burning lantern, he would not break it off because he felt it would still light up. Let's just give him hope. But it was the same man that took canes and flogged all those that were selling in the house of God. Look at the three powerful combinations that we can learn from him. It is not every answer. There are some things when they, the Lord is still speaking. Am I talking to somebody here? If they ask you, what do you say? The Lord is still what? It's not every time. Jesus was so educated. He was greater than a professor, even though he never went to any school. But he, 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 he sensed via wisdom, by being prudent, being intelligent, being wise, being careful, being thoughtful, knew when to answer and when not to answer. Some people are asking you questions to get expo. They want to know where you are in your life. Some people are coming to visit you to see if you have changed your chairs. Some people are coming to visit you to know whether to intensify the attack on your life. It's not everybody that calls you that they want to visit that you allow them to visit. Somebody might look at you and say you are stupid, but you are not. Hallelujah. You are being what? I'm not going to read this, but I'll give us this story. The parable of the ten young women, Matthew 25, is a very popular story. The bridegroom was going to come. And there were ten women that were going to meet with him. And then five out of the ten took extra oil for their lanterns. And then the other five, they had oil in their lanterns, so they left. But before you knew it, the bridegroom was late in coming to meet with them. And then the ones that had extra oil in their lamps had enough to turn into their lamp for it to keep burning. The other five, their own had finished. And they started begging the other ones, oh, give us some oil. And they said, no, go and buy some more and put. You know, in some of our church-like behavior, we'd have called them wicked. Wouldn't we have called them wicked? How can you say you are a woman of God? You are a sister, and I'm begging you that you don't give me oil. It was Jesus giving this parable. They were wise. They knew when to save. And they knew, that's why Papa would tell us, you can't come to a place, and I'm not trying to bring any ministry down, but we all have our doctrines, we all have our belief. You can't tell me, give me your car, and in seven days, this, this money will enter your hand. And then you give your car, then you go by and say, God, I need a car. Was there a conviction in your spirit to give? I'm one of the most dangerous givers. But I must be led to do it. If God says do something, he will give you a witness in your spirit and you will not struggle to do it. And then you carry your only car and then you drop and then you wait for three days. Nothing happens. You wait one week, nothing happens. Hallelujah. You and I might have called them stupid. But let me just quickly read something for us. Ephesians 5, 15, 17. I'll end with this. I was going to do three, but because of time. The Bible says, look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as what? Wise. Making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Not every question deserves an answer. Not everything around you is the way it seems. And that's why if you're far from God, you will continually make certain mistakes that you normally wouldn't make if you're in God. Because King Solomon said it, or when he said it, to get wisdom, it is from God. The place where you can access undiluted, unpolluted wisdom is from God Almighty. So the closer you are to God, the more the Holy Spirit in you is becoming more sensitive. The closer you are to God, the more he fills you with wisdom. Because God's desire is to bless us. It's for our cup to overflow. It's for abundance. But there are many things that he cannot do if you don't play your part. And that's why he says, I'm sending you out as sheep 
were very innocent, were very gullible. But at the end of the day, let me tell you, this snake is one of the most dangerous animals. But at first, if it sees you, if there's a rock or anything it will hide, it will go on that day and hide. But if it feels threatened, a king cobra will sting you. And only two of that venom is enough to kill you in 30 minutes. But yet, if it sees you, it will run away. If he sees you, it will try to hide. So your being wise doesn't make you, God is telling you, don't be stupid. Don't be foolish. Be sensitive. Because behind every smile, sometimes, there is a frown. Behind every celebration, there are those that are waiting for you to fail. Behind every promotion, there are those asking, why is it him? Is he the only one in this office? Is he the only one? The disciples partook of the communion and the Bible says their eyes became open. Let us rise to our feet. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that has been blinding you from seeing the truth, from today your eyes will begin to open. In the name of Jesus, even as you're walking into your yard, you're walking into your compound, the Holy Spirit will begin to minister to you greatly. In the mighty name of Jesus, where you shouldn't go, you will not go there. The wisdom to be excellent, the wisdom to stand out, the wisdom to be above and not below, the wisdom to be the top in everything that you do will fall upon you today. By the reason of the communion, and we know that life of anything is in the blood. Whatever it is, whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, whatever disease, by the reason of the blood today, I see deliverance in this place. I see people vomiting what has been in their life for the past 10 years, 20 years. I use you as a point of contact even to your loved ones that is not here. Let there be total healing, total deliverance. Wisdom upon your husband, wisdom upon your wife, wisdom upon you as a woman to stand by your husband, to stand by your family, to be the nurturer that God has made you to be. In the name of Jesus, tell your neighbor in getting everything. That's why the Bible says silver, gold, nothing that you can think of. A lot of us pray about so many things. We pray for protection. We pray for money, especially money. Let me tell you, King Solomon said it all when he says, if you get wisdom, happiness will not be far from you. Peace. Some people's mouths, that's what has put them in trouble. Before somebody talk one or two, you see an elder that you should respect, but maybe because you are in a position or maybe because of any reason, you insult them. Age. There are certain things that money cannot buy. Tell your neighbor age. No matter who you are, you must have respect for elders. You must have respect for people that are above you. I know certain people in certain organizations that will never grow because of your pride. And the Bible says it. Pride will always go before the choice is yours. Choose wisdom and live. Choose wisdom and what? The deliverance you need starts when you begin to pray and ask God for wisdom. If you are here and you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I've said it before, there's no way you can attain greatness without wisdom. Any man or woman that you see at the top is exhibiting great wisdom. If not, you'll make mistakes. What should come to you will not come because lack of wisdom will make you fight who you shouldn't fight. Lack of wisdom will make you do what you shouldn't do. So if you're here, you don't know Jesus, you, you are lacking. Because it is through him that we get to God. You say you want to be great, you want to be great, but you are not born again. You say you want to get married before the end of this year, but you're not born again. Because of lack of wisdom, you have 10 men, you are confused. It's only lack of wisdom that will make you make certain mistakes. You say you want to get married, but you're dating a married man. You're dating a married woman, and you want to get married. It is lack of wisdom. Praise the Lord. You say you want, you want your husband to love and celebrate you, but he comes home with 20,000. You want to collect 15 from him. And not even to invest in business. You want to go and buy a dress. It is lack of wisdom. That man cannot celebrate you. So it's the same thing. You want wisdom, you must follow God and follow him doggedly. 
not be on the fence. Today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold. We don't even know which one you are. You say you, you, you are a believer, but you talk to people as if they are animals. It's lack of wisdom because you can talk to an angel and you will not know. This is especially to the workers. Can we celebrate Jesus for that? I can come here and tell you all the sweet things that you will not learn from, but you will clap and be happy. But I want you to be better. It is our goal that you are better out of here. Excellent. In fact, not better, excellent. So if you are here, you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to place your hand on your heart. Let me pray with you. This is not the time to look at your neighbor. This is the time to connect and say, God, I'm tired of living the way I have been living. I want you to guide me, teach me everything that I need to know to be better. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me whole. I know that you died for me, resurrected on the third day, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness and make me whole. From today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Oh my, 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 can we celebrate those that have said that prayer? The Lord bless us. Open your hearts, open your mind to receive all that God has in store for us today. In Jesus' name, amen.